Hey everybody, it's Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? We are so happy you're here. Tonight is Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. Leo, why don't you hit that promo? Hi, everybody. We are so glad you're here. Uh, so much happening. Oh, my God. Tonight's show is going to be so good. So good. All right. So I am not home. I'm usually home in my studio in New York. I am in New Jersey. I'm at my girlfriend's house. Um, so I'm coming to you live from beautiful Cliffside Park, New Jersey. And I'm down in the basement. Uh, so I have been banished to the basement. But anyway, so if you hear dogs barking, there's four dogs between the two of us. and uh, But I think they're okay right now. So we should be all right. There's my uh, RTG in the background. It was a big day for government, wasn't it? Not saying a word. But um, I, I, as I was talking to Leo about earlier, as you know, sometimes the powers that be say, wait a minute, you're not going to be watching any news today. One of the dogs ate the remote while my girlfriend was away. So, I mean, it wasn't me. I, I told her I didn't, eat, it wasn't me. I didn't eat it. So it was one of the dogs. So anyway, we couldn't watch um, the news today, but I did listen to it in the car. Uh, Chris DePiro has joined us. Wait, what exit? You know, Chris, I should pay more attention. I think I take the Hudson Terrace exit. But I did acknowledge Chris first, but let's call it what it is. Our first in always is D of Danielle's, uh, I mean, Danielle of D's Enlightened Edits. She is our friend. She's amazing. She is a spiritual healer. She's a psychic. She is a card reader. She it does past life regressions, spirit animal readings, anything that will blow your mind, Danielle does. And uh, I'm a huge fan, and she, we are friends, and I love her. So she's incredible. Tell Judy I love the lamp. I will. It's a Jonathan Adler. She would want you to know that. I wouldn't know what the difference but she likes Jonathan Adler, so uh, she knows who he is. And now I know who he, she, he is because, you know, my mind has been opened to that world. Um, okay, so, but Chris DePiro, let's talk about Chris DePiro. He has an amazing show called Live from New Jersey, right, Live from New Jersey, right? Or is it Live from Jersey? Why don't I know that? Chris, type that in. And it's so good. Last week they had Al Lampert on who's just a legend, a legend of a, a bit like a big band singer. And this guy has been singing since he was 16 and he's 70 now. And he knows all the greats. So I love that show, by the way, Chris, I watched it twice. So go and check out Chris DePiro live from Jersey. And Kenny Holcomb has joined us. Hi, Kenny. Love your LGB print. That is Judy's. I can't take credit for it. However, one of my friends is the artist, and his name is PJ Andrews. He does a lot of pop art, and I have one of his pieces at home. Judy commissioned him to do a lot, to do you know, uh, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, jeez, uh, uh, I mean, all kinds of stuff in this house that PJ's done. Uh, Frederick Douglass. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of PJ Andrews stuff in this house. Um, anyway. Okay, so uh, mutual fan says Danielle. Uh, who else am I missing? Chris appeared. To Belle Parker. Hi, Belle. How you doing, honey bunny? She's zooming in. I mean, she's checking in from Wisconsin. She's an amazing singer, amazing singer, and gymnast and mom. She's a little girl who's just adorable. My cousin Rena Cunali Bergi from Massachusetts has checked in. Uh, she's had. Her knee surgery is going amazing. Rena, I'm so proud of you. We talked this week and caught up. She is the bionic woman because thank you, Leo. Leo is doing uh, Jamie from the, uh, wasn't that her name, Jamie? Yeah, Jamie Summers. Jamie Summers, that's right. She lives in Ojai, California. We, speaking of Jamie's, we have a Jamie coming on tonight. Oh, my God. She's a fantastic. This is bionic, I think. She might be bionic. I mean, she's she's might be a bionic dancer. I mean, I've seen her dance. She's incredible. 
the other um, energy should, that those two, these two. Oh my God, we we have right. Thank you, Leah. We have two amazing um, guests tonight: Jamie Marie Hannigan and Rosie Chia Corcoran. They are two of the amazing performers of Velvet Stardust. If you don't know what Velvet Stardust is, you are gonna know by the end of the show, mm -hmm. and you are going to be hooked. And if you see them live, which you should, you're going to be addicted. I'm telling you, it happens. It's it's one of those situations. It's so entertaining. So we're going to bring them on in a couple minutes. You know what's addicting? What? Brand. What is it? Uh, oh, no. Okay, Rena is laughing because that's our cousin. Okay, so here's – for those of you who have never seen the show and are like, what in God's name is happening? So we have a calendar <laughs> that Leo and I, well, Leo combs through all these semi-nudes. Rigorously. Painted, rigorously. Um, so our friends, we have, of course, 12 months in every year, and our friends volunteer. They are not paid participants. And to quote my sister in Massachusetts, Dallin, only you can get people to take their clothes off without paying them. I said, I am not trying to not pay them. So I just, people... Already, do you know we have two people already for next year's calendar? Are for you 2025. Serious? I'm like, I'm I haven't even finished 2024 yet. I know we're full. Oh my goodness. So we have some amazing people coming on for 2024. That is complete, and the pictures are rolling in. But so this month is my cousin, Jerry Savino. He is a baker. That's why, hence the bread. I don't want you to mm -hmm. think that there's anything suggestive or dirty here. Not at all. Not at all dirty or suggestive. You see, he is celebrating Halloween trick or treat. And he is a baker. That is his profession. That is his trade. He is, it looks like there's some multi-grain bread in there. You know, there might be a little multi-grain bread. There. I mean, after all, we are Italian. You know, Italian is a melting pot of... Semolina. Uh, right. <laughs> all, all kinds of things. So he, that is Jerry Savino. I'm going to give him a shout out because he... and. He's a year younger than me. That's it. I mean, we're not spring chickens. And I think he looks really good. There is a word for guys like that. There Daddy. is. Daddy's. I knew you were going to say Daddy. that. Daddy. So Re I know Rena's laughing, but Rena, I got to tell you <laughs> something. So Rena's brothers, they, um, they're they funny guys. But, um, but the, the oldest one, Ronnie, is a brat. Like Ronnie. a brat. And uh, Rena, do you remember at Christmas time when I brought – the calendar home for Christmas Eve and Ronnie was making fun of Jerry. And I said, Oh yeah, then you get semi naked like Jerry, try it. And, and so far he hasn't volunteered for any calendar. So I'm going to give a shout out to Jerry Savino, my cousin, Mr. <laughs> October. There he is. Enjoy some bread, everybody. As Leo said, um, it's not at any time to be on keto because no, nope, are... not this month. Bread, bread, and more bread. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And and squeeze it. Make sure it's fresh. That's right. So we're excited about our 2024 calendar. It is full. People are sending in pictures as as we speak. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> if you want to, I know it gets crazy closer to Christmas. Leo's going to be start sending them out for print soon. We should have them by what, Leo, like December 1st? Uh, a little bit. Uh, the calendars, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, the calendars by December 1st. First okay. week of December is what we're aiming for. Right. So um, then you could order calendars. They, uh, I don't know what they're going to cost. They're not expensive, though. I can tell you that much. And then whatever it is to ship them out to you. But we, they're great stocking stuffers. They're great presents. What are you laughing at? And what Rena said, the weather what, girl. What did she say? Hello and happy. I missed it, Leah. What did she? Oh, it's, it it's, takes. It's, Oh, to pose in your apron. Yeah, it does. I don't know how to say that correctly, so I don't want to say it. Bulls, yeah. Bulls? It yeah. Bulls? Or boules. All right. Boules. So you're yeah. right. You're right. Um, but it, that's right. And you can tell your brother that. He can make fun of Jerry all he wants. As soon When he wants to take his clothes off, put it on an apron, and take a picture, he can too. One of your family members owes us a picture, though, right? On a boat somewhere at, at the marina? Well, that was Rena's brother was going to do that. Robbie right. was going to send us a picture on a boat, but I didn't, you know, I don't push the issue. It's been I, bad weather. I don't want anybody to get naked because I force them. If people want to take their clothes off, that is their business and I will enjoy <laughs> it, but I will not be putting any pressure on anyone. 
No okay, pun intended. So you now, need to be serious. You need to now be serious. let's get serious for a minute because uh, we do want to bring the girls on uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Okay, so there's something happening that I'm really excited about and I like to. Uh, there's something in New York called the NYPL, which is New York Public Library.org backslash banned books. They're having an event. It's live at the, the New York libraries. However, they also have a virtual event. So go to that website and check it out. <clears throat> now, the funny thing is that they've made such a big deal about these banned books. Most of these books are books that you've already, when you were in school, you already read. Like, believe it or not, To Kill a Mockingbird was on the banned book list. It, Toni Morrison is on. I mean, it's the most ridiculous. Ruby Fruit Jungle is on. It's ridiculous. But go Judy and check Bloom. it out. Judy Bloom. I mean, come on. So Florida, uh, I don't even want to mention some of these red states that are banning books for the most ridiculous reasons. But you see all these amazing people are coming in. So you can join this virtual event. Please go. I don't know the exact date. I think it's all week, actually. Pure jealousy. Yeah. Yes, Mr. February, who was her husband. By the way, her husband, Ron Berge, was our original Mr. February. He is a postman, and he posed semi-nude there. And he thank delivered. you, Ron. He did deliver. And, and rain or sleet or snow, he was there. And thank you for originating the role of Mr. February. Rena, thank your husband for me, please. You know I love him. Okay, so uh, go to that event. We, uh, we pr are promoting the, uh, the nypl.org banned books event. Please also postcards to swing states. I've been filling those out um, because turnout pack. Thank you. I have 250 postcards to do. I think I've only gotten through 100, but I'm going to keep going because you got to. I have to mail them vote. out. You know, vote. Just vote. listen. Everything is at stake. Okay. All right. We don't want to waste any more time. Mm -hmm. We are so excited you're here. So okay, here's how it went down. So Chauncey Dandridge, who's my good friend, said to me, he works at Stonewall. He's a DJ. He works everywhere. But if we work together at Stonewall. He goes, oh, my God. There's a show that uh, that that uh, it's going to be at the Stonewall Inn. It's called Velvet Stardust. You're going to freak out. Now, I trust Chauncey. But, and we have similar tastes. But, you know, I, I didn't freak out because I see a lot of shows until the show started. And then I was like, what the hell? Is this so? I am just gonna bring them on. These are the two of the most wonderful, talented, gorgeous, sexy girls ever Jamie Marie Hannigan and Rosie Lucia Corcoran. Let's zoom them in. Let's do it. There they are. Hi, girls. What an intro! Hello, I want to keep you around. Listen, it's the truth. <laughs> I, I know. I, you, yeah. I do not lie. I'm not a good liar. I don't like to lie. I think it's ridiculous. I don't like to fabricate. I swear to God, let me just say this and then I'll let you jump in. I, 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 I watched, well, I'm a musician anyway, and I'm a singer. So I always gravitate towards that anyway, but I'm a rocker at heart and I, the visuals on top of that. So you, they have, I'll let you tell everybody what it is, but what I took in as an audience member, I was bartending the show. And I was bartending and I was like, what? The? It's so much happening. You have, it's almost like surround sound of, of incredible stimulation for your ears, your eyes, everything. It's a rock show. It's a burlesque show. It's a, a they're singers, they're dancers. It's so exciting. You get it. I was hooked. I was hooked. And so let's ladies, let's, okay. So go ahead, Leo, show a little bit of what, so you sent me a bunch of stuff, Jamie, and um, yeah. so, so what's was, happening here? This was our very first promo shoot that we did. We did a live audience promo shoot just to like um, get some footage, get some people in the room. So this was just like a really quick reel that we made from our, our very first um, shoot that we did. It's so good. It's Thank so you. good. So you have, you have three dancers, right? Or four dancers? So it varies depending on um, the show that we're doing, depending on the venue. I mean, there's anywhere between three to six dancers usually. Wow, okay. And then you have a full rock band, right? We have a full rock band um, led by Rosie. 
we usually have a four or five piece band, you know, guitar mm -hmm. based keys, drums, sometimes horns, um, mm -hmm. a couple a couple background singers, a couple of them are featured in some solo songs. So yeah, we got a lot going on. Yeah. So Rosie, when I, uh, when I was setting up the bar, you were rehearsing and I was like, for, I thought it was a recording at first. I thought it was a recording. <laughs> I was like, Oh, Chauncey, wow. cause you know, Chauncey's a DJ. So I'm like, Oh yeah. Chauncey's playing some really cool stuff. And then right. <laughs> I realized it was coming from you. You have amazing yeah. pipes. So, wow, Rosie, Thank like, you. I love your voice, but I love your grit. <laughs> like, you are gritty. I love that. You <laughs> right. are, like, Thank the you. essence of a rocker, you know? Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's pretty crazy. I feel really lucky to be able to be singing some of the songs that we do and to be having everything, you know, like you said, all of this, the stimulation is happening around it mm -hmm. at the same time, to be playing with great musicians and just having all of that, you know, in amazing places like Stonewall and things like that. It's, it all helps build, um, it just really helps me just to really give it all and just go for it. I, yeah. I've performed with other things, other productions in the past. And, you know, I've it's, it's been a while till I've, it, it's taken a while to get to the point where I could just really go for it and just, growl and scream and sing and just let it all out um Love and i'm it. really glad i've got to this point that i can do it and, and you don't <laughs> so, you don't just know. do the easy stuff you do like the like the heart you do right like some real serious rocker chick stuff because i know i'm a singer too and i don't even go near heart because it's the range yeah. is so big like that's why I, like <laughs> that's that's her stuff right there right uh, i love to watch i was watching oh that's my she's favorite about to that's do, my favorite about to do yeah. those because people are like Right? I mean, <laughs> like, what the hell is that? And then, um, so you you cover vocally your band and uh, Rosie, you're the main singer, right? And then I know other singers jump in, but you're the main, yes. front, the lead singer. Yeah, I kind of host and lead sing. So like, I kind of keep everybody together, make sure we're all on the same page. You know, there's uh, so much going on, you know, to, to factor in, oh, is this dancer ready? Has this dancer mm -hmm. left the stage yet? Are they done? Do we need to cut this song here because they've got to go? Have they gotten stuck in their outfit? Do they need more time? Standing on the, uh, on the wings <laughs> going like this. Oh. <laughs> right, right. So it's, it's a lot of that and making sure we're all in the same place mentally, physically, and that it's all happening that way. Um, and then it, it, it's helpful because we do have a couple of other amazing singers who will step in and do one or two so I can take a break or have a costume change myself because yeah. I get jealous of everybody else because I get to have all of these amazing costume changes and things. So I get to sneak off a couple of times during the show and, and change my outfit or put on a headdress or do some crazy stuff. Yeah, and there and the and the other singers are and there's some amazing like they you switch out. I love that. But the thing is, at, for someone that's watching, you know, I'm not thinking she's going back for costume change. I'm like, there's so much happening all the time, right? And and right. there's just so much to take in. So now, Jamie, you are the producer. You this is your this was your idea, right? And you created this. Yes, and I dragged everyone along with me. I love it. <laughs> Well, you um, yeah, have an so, eye and ear for this stuff. So tell me how that started. Like, what was, was it like a dream, a fantasy of yours? Like, I wonder what it would be. Like, tell me how that happened. I always tell everybody on stage, I think in the last show, I grabbed the mic and I was like, this is what goes on inside my head. Enjoy. Um, but <laughs> so this, this, this show actually transitioned from a couple of years ago. I think about two, two and a half years ago now, I saw the memory come up on Facebook. Thank God for Facebook memories. I know. I would have no idea what's happening. I know, it's true. <laughs> But I think it was like two years and change at this point where um, Rosie and I were doing a monthly 80s live show, very much the same format. Um, and, you know, we, we did it a couple of times, did really well. And I was like, you know what? I really want to pull the trigger on this idea that I've had for a really long time. And I think I finally have the people. That's kind of how it goes in a, in a producer's mind, or at least in mine. Mm -hmm. I always have ideas happening and it's just, it's a constant stream for me right. of things that I want to do. It's, it's like, it's a lot. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I was sitting with the venue owner that day and I said, you know what, I'm just going to do it. Let's do it. And we pulled it together in two weeks. Um, and it kind of just took off from there. So we just we started doing it. Yeah. Now, now, Jamie, you're you're like an amazing dancer. Amazing. Thank you. Do you do all the choreography for the for the show? 
so for the group numbers, I do all the choreography because we don't just have, it's not just a bunch of dancers coming out and soloing. We have a lot of group numbers with choreography throughout. So we do that and that is my choreography. Um, and then, you know, I like to um, let the dancers for their solos kind of, you know, I'll give them the songs. Most of the time, Rosie and I decide on the songs for the show um, and kind of let them, you know, roll with it. And then mm. I will, of course, give my input if it's not, where I want it to be but these dancers that we have are amazing and there really hasn't been many times where I've had to step in and be like oh you know what that's not really my vision um so I'm really lucky to have to have that and and it really allows oh sorry no no please (laughs) go go it really allows for just a really eclectic show. I think the the fact that Jamie's like, okay, take this, run with it, you know, because everybody has different um, talents and different things that they, you know, pref- not even prefer to do, but their sweet spot. And, you know, so there's hip hop, there's contemporary, there's samba, there's there's so many different types of dance that's happening. Um, it's not just your typical burlesque. There is elements of classic burlesque in it, um, but I think goes so far beyond that. And I think, you know, it's great that we can tie it all together with everybody on the group numbers. I can even try and attempt a little bit of <laughs> the dance mm-hmm. uh, and then and then everybody just gets their moment to shine and really just like what drives them and what they want to do. No, listen, I, I love what you just said. There, there are elements of burlesque. I'm, I love burlesque. I'm a, I've been a burlesque fan for like years and years, and I love it because it is theater, right? It's sexy, but it's theater. But what you're right, so you have elements of that, but really, it's a, it's a thousand steps up from that. Like this is a rock. It's, I, I can't. How do you describe Velvet Stardust? What a good question. <laughs> Unless you see it, it's almost impossible to describe it. So that was something that, you know, we get asked a lot when we do interviews and stuff. And it's been a challenge marketing wise, because I mean, Rosie and I, we do everything ourselves when it comes to like marketing and promoting. Like, So uh, we're really proud to have something that's so different. Um, but because you can't really categorize it, it it's funny to try to market something. Where, what are you going to say to everybody? Like, oh, man, you know, you just got to see it. Like, but it's true it's true and that's what i mean that's that's really the feedback that we get a lot is that when the show's over we have people come up to us and they're just like oh my god you know i didn't really know what i was coming to i I didn't really i thought this but oh my god it's so much more and you know we're lucky because when people come they are hooked and they come back again it's just you know we got to get them in the door so yeah that's what it and but i'm telling you do your senses a favor and go to Velvet Stardust <laughs> because it, you just, I mean, and if you, if you're a rocker, like I am, even if you're not a rocker, but, but you, you have, you know, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your friends are rockers and you're like, all right, they can drag me along. You're going to be a rocker by the end of it. Cause it's all, <laughs> it's all songs that you know, that you love, that you like turn up when you're in the car or that it, it comes on or during a movie and you're like, yeah. You know, we throw we throw a lot of surprises in there also, <laughs> which is fun, like, you know, to kind of jump off of what we said about the dancers really getting to bring their own vibe into the numbers. It's like, you know, we always ask them, is there something you've always wanted to do? Because we should do it like this is the show for that. So, That's Rosie great. and I, you know, we come up with a thing. We make set lists and we have little Google Google Docs. So many of them. Yeah. And, you know, so we'll do the set list and. Um, you know, we'll have conversations like, do we want to do this one this time? Are we going to do it? We got to do it. So we have a little like, hey, for a month from now, list. Right. You know, so we're just uh, trying to live the dream. We're so precious yeah. about certain songs that we want to do. We don't want to be like, no, we can, we have to cut that one this time. Or this one really just doesn't go with the theme at all, but we love doing it. Like, uh, you know, so <laughs> it can be yeah. tough because there's definitely times when we're like, okay, we have an hour and 45 minutes, or we have two hours, or we have 30 minutes, and it has to be perfect. And we, you know, it takes a lot of our back and forth, like, okay, what's what's it going to be this time? What have we got to wait for for New Year's show or for the Halloween show? We'll save it for that one. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's a, that's a great place for us to go next. So you do have a show coming up October yeah. 13th at the Triad, which I love. The Triad's a great space. So tell me, tell us about that. And I'm going to a different page now because we're running on two pages I want to see if anybody else is checking us out. So, so we had uh, we did a residency at Stonewall for for a year, I believe. 
Wow. Um, and we just, you know, we travel a lot on the East Coast and we're playing LA in November. Mm -hmm. So we really wanted to get back in New York and heard a lot of great things about the town. Jamie, um, and Jamie Sellers. So, and it kind of just lends itself to burlesque. Like it looks mm -hmm. like, it looks like that type of show should be there. Um, and, you know, we've become really good at adapting to venue spaces. Like this show really, you know, everybody comes up to us and says, this show belongs on a huge theater stage. And like, yes. yes, it does. And we love that. But we also love playing smaller, intimate venues. And I think that's the experience that everybody's going to get here at the Triad. Um, and it's a Friday the 13th show. Um, so we've got some, you know, fun, creepy, culty, October theme stuff. <laughs> oh, I, I love that. that good? Oh, that's I cool. Because <laughs> Rosie and I were like, what are we calling it? Um, but it's awesome. And we both, we both love that kind of stuff. And, um, we, you know, we have a lot of the same songs that are favorites, which just happen to go with the theme. Cause that's kind of where we ride. Um, but we did add some new ones for this show specifically. Um, right. <laughs> with the theme. <laughs> cool. Oh, that's so, and what time is the show? It's at nine, nine thirty. Uh, they actually have a show happening uh earlier that night so we always say like you know we used to talk to chauncey all the time shout out to chauncey i know you mentioned him before chauncey's but, um, the best we love is. him and we are just each other's it. biggest fans uh yeah he's he loves you he loves you girls he's too. the coolest um yeah. so there's a show that night there before us so we're, we're actually playing you know the nine o'clock slot and i think that's really cool for for a burlesque show in the city we always kind of played the earlier slot sometimes at stonewall um but we're excited to be playing later in the night on the 13th Oh, it's going to be great. And that's actually a perfect time, you know, because uh, I think a lot, so too. Yeah. Traffic wise too, you know, because that way if you, if people are coming in from Jersey or Connecticut or, or Long Island or, or even the city, like it gets really trafficy early, but then it starts to, you know, and that triad theater is beautiful. I've done shows there and gone to shows there and it's, it's just the way that the seats slant up. And and the, the 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 shape of the theater almost looks like something out of the forties, you know, like uh I, I, I can't I don't know what they call that. It's like beautiful. Right. Yeah, it's like really a speakeasy excited. kind of vibe in there. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's definitely like a speakeasy kind of like dinner theater. Like I think it's gonna lend itself perfectly to what we're and doing. And the lighting we'll have to and, clear some tables out of the way so we can have the dancers <laughs> down the front. Um but oh, you know, definitely. I think once we do that it'll be it'll be brilliant for the space. Yeah. Yeah. And that, now let's talk a little bit. Oh also Danielle. Uh, says Friday the 13th, lucky day for women, the goddesses love 13. So that's good to know. Yeah. She, uh, um, okay, great. So, I mean, there's another reason to, and Italians love 13. That's our lucky number. It's just, um, so Mike uh, uh, Pello has joined us. Michael Mackesy has joined us too. I watch it on two different sites to see Kenny Holcomb. Um, all right. I, if I missed anybody, just type it in. Um, okay. And the show, how long is the show? An hour, a little bit over an hour? So we definitely cut it down from our normal. I feel like we're usually doing like really, really oh. long shows, right? Like the one at, we just did at the Mock Chunk Opera House in Pennsylvania, which is like one of our favorite places to play. I feel like right. we were there for 16 hours and nobody realized <laughs> it, you know? It was just amazing. And we, we just kept going. Yeah. But we, de we definitely had to shorten the show at the triad. I don't know, Rosie, what's right. on our set list? Um, uh, so, but um, the, it's let, about an hour and a half. Um, we're not doing a break this time. No, we're just going to go right through. Um, you can't and, escape. Yeah, so about hour and, hour and I half. I love it. Uh, you don't need a break. You don't um, want. Yeah. You don't yeah. want a break. <laughs> as so an we're audience just gonna go for it. I love that. Um, and the one in Pennsylvania. Exactly. Is that, exactly. Is that the same thing? Is that the same format? Like a kind of uh, a rocker show? And oh, do you throw other elements in there as well? Cause that's so, a big stage, right? Yeah, so it's it's definitely cool. We have a lot of room to dance around. We can use All more right. dancers for that. We can use more dancers for that. Look who I surprise yeah! you with! Hi guys, Chauncey. How are you? I'm I'm trying. I'm on streamer. Leave me alone. I'm going in the <laughs> going in the in the walk in. We would. Nice and cold in here. Why, well, Seth, Chauncey? You have to surprise the girls. That's I can barely hear you guys. Yeah. I just want to say hello. About you. You just want I'm to at work. Hello. And it's gorgeous, so cute. You look gorgeous. He's so cute. I Why know, is he he's, so cute? I can barely uh, hear you. Adorable. My volume's not working. He's, it's all right. He's adorable. We love you. Thank you for saying hello. Look how cute he is. <laughs> oh, my God. We love Chauncey. I said, oh, he's at work good. right now. I said, Chauncey, you have to come in and surprise the girls at some point. 
and we were just talking about him, right? We so were. he just couldn't stay on because he's working. And there, I know, but so that's how uh, Chauncey Dandridge, that's how we all met. So the show in Pennsylvania. So, yeah, so the show in Pennsylvania, it's, I think it's like a perfect size stage for the show. Um, but so, like I said, we're really good at kind of adapting to the space. So we might just have to change the blocking a little bit at sound check. Um, but my dancers are very used to, you know, jumping up there, you know, listening, being in it. Okay, well, we're going to have to change this formation for this. You know, you'll have to come on stage left instead of stage right. So everybody's kind of ready for the mental notes at sound check and we just make it work. Yeah. You're going to get a chance to rehearse in that space before you go uh, Yeah, in. we're going to have like a quick, quick sound check. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard sometimes. When you have a, a show that goes to different venues, Sometimes you'd have just a few minutes to adjust everything, but that those like are real professionals. You, you know, yeah, you used to. Now That's let's talk. This show needs, <laughs> we need people that can adapt to any situation. <laughs> Absolutely. Like uh, just, you know, like I know what my you job is. You never know. Is. Like, it... Go ahead. Honey. You said you oh, never know. <laughs> you never know what you, what you're going to be dealing with, whether it's, you know, the, like this kind of space that we might have at Stonewall to get changed in, or if you suddenly can't find something or you put your, heaven forbid, you put your microphone down when you're backstage and then you don't know where you put it and it's time to get back out there. And, you know, there's so many different things that could be happening in a, in a certain moment. And, and that's, you know, part of the fun of the entire thing. Um, but it's very important to have people that can do that and manage and not just panic. It's like, well, no, we have to stand over here now this time because the stage is this way, you know, and yeah. uh, it's, we've been lucky that we have a lot of great people, especially with elements such as the flow arts, the hoops, the, uh, the glow. And I forgot about the hoops. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's Jamie, that's all you. No, it's so we have different flow artists that come in and out of the show that we work with. Um, but they'll do anything from hoops to silk fans, um, led props. Oh, so wow. it's yeah. on fire sometimes, depending on the venue. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so cool. What do you go ahead, Leo? I know you're thinking of something. It, it reminds me of that game we had in early theater class, balance. That you know, if you're standing over here, then sitting standing, over sitting. here, then yeah, yeah. Really, the whole balance exercise. <laughs> standing, sitting, and laying down, right? Yeah. Somebody uh -huh. had to move, Remember? then you had to move. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a you, really you had great to ace that to do what you guys are doing. Yeah, among the other things, and all yeah. in like eight-inch heels and different things like that, and very little. Right. Gosh, and then your and then your boots it's, break like they did in the show last time for me, just busted <laughs> open while I was dancing. I was like, okay, cool. All right, well there it is. <laughs> and, what do you and you just keep dancing. That's all. That's it. Okay, keep dancing right. in the middle of the show. <laughs> kept going, ripped oh it right off the bone <laughs> while I jumped. Just that's right. Oh, oh my god, that's it. But, you know. That was, was a fun video. one. <laughs> that was a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you have a you don't have tracks. You have a full band, a live band. Yes. So why don't we talk about that now? T t tell all the tell everybody what who's what pieces you have, and are they the same guys and girls that travel with you? Are they different musicians? How does that work? So we have kind of a core group. Um, we always have um, drums, guitar, bass, and keys, um, especially with a lot of the <laughs> 80s and those power ballads and just all of that. Keys are essential. Um, every now and then we'll add some horns uh, for certain um, occasions. Um, uh, Jamie also puts on performances that are more of a broken down like jazz trio. And sometimes that's something that they'll do alternately to Velvet Stardust. Um, and we usually have a core group, but obviously because we're all different working musicians or working in different fields as well um, with other bands or other, you know, all, you know, all sorts of different things. Um, you know, every now and then we have to bring in new people and we've been really lucky that anybody that we've had step in in somebody's absence has just really just shown up, come to rehearsal, like, you know, a minimal rehearsal, just shown up and, and done the job and, and done us proud and it's been amazing so i think we've been really fortunate when it's come to to things like that um but yeah that's our standard band and then that really fills out the sound and then we have two amazing backing singers as well um mm -hmm. who really fill out that they're, they're incredible and they um do work really well together and know where what needs filling in and what doesn't and when to pull back and when to you know do all of that so that's where we're at right now. Um, and everybody's been fantastic to work with so far. So. Wow. I love it. Yeah, it's really, really great. Now, so I was telling Jamie earlier, this, this show is about creative people. Like I, sometimes we have chefs on, visual artists, you know, and I always find that 
um, no matter what creative people do, they really always kind of start out the same. Like they're, they're those kids that have those minds, you know, we're just different. We're different than the other kids. And I know cause I'm a teacher, so I, I can always find my creative kids, you know, like they just think like this. So uh, I'll ask you individually wh when, like, did, was this, the, the singing, the dancing, that just entertainment, being on stage, was this always something that was in your in your head and your heart and your, how did that start? Rosie, let's start with you and then we'll, we'll go to Jamie. So as a kid, were you, sure. what kind of kid were you? Oh yeah. <laughs> From the very beginning, <laughs> I was the one you? singing. Right, right. Let's not get too far into that. But yes, I was the loud and klutzy and messy and just extravagant one. Um, I, you know, from my heritage, you know, my backgrounds, like, so I was born in England, all my family's from Ireland, um, but there was constantly singing and, um, you know, my grandparents would teach me little ditties and songs, you know, one set would like westerns and musicals, the other would teach me little old sailor songs and shanties and things like this, and, yeah. and uh, I fell in love with Gilbert and Sullivan with the Pirates of Penzance when I was small just because one of my cousins was in the play at school so I would be singing songs from the Pirates of Penzance as my mom would push me around the supermarket and she would just leave me in the aisles because she just didn't want to deal with me <laughs> so she just like, all right you sit over there I'm gonna go do the shopping um and and yeah from there it was just musical theater and just just all of that stuff but and, see there there are your high notes that makes total sense that's why I always right. ask people <laughs> Cause it, you know, those there, you pirates of Penzance. That's some high stuff, right? You know? Yeah, that's very broad. <laughs> yes, but I, yeah. but I love. It. So you you had a lot of energy even as a kid, and you just and and I love the background stuff because I oh I was like I I love your accent, but it's hard for me to place it. I'm like right. <laughs> So, <laughs> my accent is all over the place. Um, so I, I came over here in about 2006, 2007. Now you see I'm talking very British now that it's now that we're talking about it. Um, <laughs> but uh, the moment I speak to somebody from England or Ireland, like it comes back. But there's definitely just a, everybody says, oh, are you Australian? Are you New Zealand? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I think just the collaboration of British, Irish, New Jersey. I lived in LA for a while. I right. like, traveled around a lot, New, you know, just New York, New Jersey. I think it just now here we are. And I don't know. I have to not I think love about it. it too much. It does, <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. It's it's fabulous. Whatever it, whatever you. it Thank is. Thank you. It's, it's confusing, sound. but, you know, people like it. it. Doesn't, I just <laughs> like, but you know what? It's intriguing. So you're like, oh, that's different than what I'm used to hearing. So, right. and, when, and when you sing, it's just this amazing sound that comes out. So it's fantastic. Thanks. And everyone, mm -hmm. everyone should go see a Velvet. Now, do you ever do LA shows? You do, you talked about that, Jamie, we're, right? Yeah, we're playing um, the Whiskey in November. Okay, because um, Rick, who just joined us, Rick Caritas, he is in LA. Leo lives in Palm Springs. We have a lot of listeners from that part of the country. There's a post about it on our Instagram page. Um, it's the one of my behind with a purple background. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <for it. laughs> Someone has to show their behind with a purple background. It might as well be you, Jamie. Listen, at least it's a purple background. <laughs> That'd be my first choice. So now you okay, so you, Jamie, who uh you, you said you had these thoughts in your head and you you're like you you know, you this is your head this is basically your mind, right? Yeah, but, so that was that was me when I was younger too. I was always um putting on shows with the neighborhood kids or starting my own businesses or, you know, doing things like that and I, people, I have the silliest, well, to me, it's not silly, but people tell me it's silly. Um, things that I got hooked on that I say are the reason why I do this. So I used to watch the Shelley Duvall fairy tale videos, like obsessively. I remember those, they were great. I, I still have all the VHS tapes that I cannot part with. And so I look at them every once in a while with love. And <laughs> that's all. Those were um, great. <laughs> I, I remember them. them now. And wow. you know, I was, I was in dance class from the time I was, young probably like six or seven um and uh yeah i was just a really big fan of the shelly duvall fairy tales did a lot of theater um big fan of janet jackson and the spice girls who do a lot of theatrical things um with the girl power element added in so yeah i love that you're how absolutely I the bug. Yeah, okay that's why i always ask because you know like I just find that that creative kids are a little bit different. And I love all kids. I mean, I've been teaching for 30 years, but I can always find that kid, you know. And lots of times they're really shy. You know, they're they're introverted, but there's something extra happening that you're like, you know what? That's a completely different 
That's a completely different thought. I have the, one of those. He's four and a half. <laughs> he's beautiful, by the way. I see him on your Thank pages. You. He, he looks exactly like you. Yeah, you know, uh, he does. He does. <laughs> he he looks just, a lot like my brother too. Yeah. yeah, I bet. But now, so what do you see in him that uh, that do you, so you see that creative spark in him, and how does it manifest with him? Um, he's very creative. He's he's always talking. He's got a constant stream of thought, like I do. You know, and it's always creative. He's acting things out. He doesn't like to watch cartoons or animated shows. He likes to watch like, YouTube videos of people acting out scenes. Oh wow! And then he'll go and he'll do the same thing so really? it, that's, that's how we play like he and it this was not my influence at all you know he'll be like okay mommy you stay here you say this and then i'm gonna say this and then you go over there okay okay wow. and if i do it wrong <laughs> you have to do it again <laughs> i love it so he's like a director head, head too yeah. Yeah, the teacher said that. She's like, he likes to direct everyone on the playground. I was like, sorry, it's in his blood. <laughs> That's fantastic. But how cool that you like, you just let him do it. You know, you let him like just be who he is. That's wonderful. Yeah, there's no other way to be. You got yeah. to because he's, he's going to do it anyway, right? So Right, exactly. <laughs> you might as well get on board and, and support because exactly. he's but a very strong-willed little boy. Yeah, and I think we all... Uh, we all are those kids. We have that light and either people that are, that we're raised by either see it or they don't, or a teacher sees it or, or someone says, listen, you know what, come here for a second. You know, do you realize that you have this gift or something? And I think that that's such a wonderful thing to do for kids, you know, and that people did for us. So I'm always ha so happy about that. We're going to take a minute and we're going to acknowledge some of the people that have popped on. So um, Mel White has joined us. Hi, Mel. How's it going? Andy Prasky has joined us. And Andy Prasky is a uh, an amazing uh, director. Speaking of directors, he uh, does a lot of documentaries. He does a lot of films, commercials, all kinds of stuff. And Andy uh, and his partner, Sean, are going to be on the show in two weeks, I believe, right, Andy? They are they're big costume guys too. They love costumes and they are gonna come on because we're gonna kick off like costume month for Halloween. So we're looking forward to that. It's two weeks from tonight. So come on and uh, say hi to Andy and Sean. And uh, Rick uh, is a writer. He's a songwriter, he's a screenwriter. He's uh, a not, he's writes really funny books. And Rick is gonna be in our calendar Next year, our 2024 calendar, Rick is Mr. June. So keep your eyes out for that. Girls, I don't know if you know, but we have a calendar every year that, uh, I mean, next year is already filled. You might have two more people to be in there for next I, year. I, I know. I mean, I would love <laughs> it. I, for 2025, you can pick your own month and do whatever you want. All you have to do is wear, you have to wear the Maria, I mean, uh, what's the story with Maria Callen? I mean, apron. And then you can do anything you want with it. You see, Chauncey is yes. Mr. There he is. He's Mr. March. So he's, he's making so his big muscles in the kitchen. So anyway, okay. We so definitely will be on your calendar. I think we also um, want to do a Velvet Stardust calendar too. Eventually, we were just should. talking about that. We were just talking about that. You should. It's a great way we to definitely got the material people. for it. You know, I know you do. So. <laughs> I know you do and you have enough uh, great pictures and all kinds of stuff. I, I mean, I think people would, people love this stuff. Cause, and then also um, it's something every month you're reminded of what, whatever it is that, you know, the people are promoting, but you also, it, it's like just a fun thing to do. So I, I say go for the calendars. Yes. All right. doing but it. 2025, <laughs> right before 2025, I'm going to call upon you next year at this time and say, Ladies, if you want to be in the calendar, you're welcome to. Yeah. Send Yay. us our aprons. Send yes. us the aprons. See, oh, <laughs> I will. This is my cousin Jerry. He is a baker, and this is his, was his contribution to it. So, uh, and you know, I think he looks good. He's like he's my age. He looks good for good for you, Jerry, cousin Jerry Savino. Yes, Jerry. <laughs> get it, get it, Jerry. Get it, Jerry. Get it. Oh, he's a big ham. You can't keep him <laughs> in his seat. He would love your show. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell, he's in Massachusetts, but he travels a lot for work. And I'm going to tell him about what you're showing. He'll start following you. And then if he's in town, yeah. he'll come. He's a We're great deal. We're all over the place. So I know. Bring the show to Massachusetts. I was going to yeah. say, 
uh, they would well, love you there. Have you ever thought we about do, that? Um, I, I'm talking with venues now in Massachusetts, but we do, uh, last year we did the Great Burlesque Festival in Salem. Um, so it's like, it's not the thing where we can bring the full band, but a couple of us went and did kind of a very scaled down version of Velvet Stardust. And we're going to go back this year. So you know we'll where there's the a, there's a great club that I played in May. It's called Club Cafe. Look at, I'll send you all the links to it. Awesome. And I, I know the book, and I know the booking manager, he's lovely. And it's such a perfect venue for Velvet Stardust. They have a yeah. huge stage. Chauncey came to the show, huge stage, great lights, great sound. And they would love you. And it holds, the, the theater holds like a hundred. So it, it's a yeah. really good space. And I'll, I'll send you the, all the, the Thank stuff. You. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Now, uh, we're going to take a quick break. Leo, why don't you join us for a minute? I forgot to tell you girls, we always do a food section of our show uh, at 9.45-ish, and we call it, uh, go ahead, keep eating. <laughs> so, so you have to do that with me. So at the count three, Leo, will you join us, please? I know he's very busy back there. He's like the Wizard of Oz. Okay, so on the <laughs> count of three, we're going to all say, go ahead, keep eating. So, folks, this is a section of our show called Go ahead. Keep eating. All right. Normally I cook for the show because if I'm going to ask people to be creative and come on, I like to stay creative. But this week was different. My girlfriend was away and I was taking care of her three dogs and my dog. So I'm at her house and I didn't get to cook. But when I am in Jersey, I like to try different things that are out here. So there's an amazing and a shout out. Now, nobody ever pays me to promo. I promo what I love. There's an amazing bakery, and I think Chris DePiro will know about this. It's called Satay, S-A-T-A-Y. It's a Turkish bakery, but Turkish bakeries also make like savory things as well. And they're open 24-7. So for someone who works nights like me and is driving sometimes to Jersey at 4 a.m., thank you, Satay. So I bought this um, today. And what it is, is it's like a Turkey is right next to Greece, right? So it's all that phyllo dough and those beautiful, delicious things. This is spinach, ground beef, and cheese in a phyllo dough. I don't know the name of it. I should. They cut it up for you. They warm it up. It's phenomenal. So uh, that is my featured uh, dish of the night. I didn't make it. I usually cook for these shows. but And this is just my regular uh, green salad from the River Palm. So just... Mm -hmm. um, Yes, but it's usually my salads are prettier. I will say, Jamie, I make some pretty salads, right, Leo? There's no fruit in this one. No, I usually put fruit and everything in there. So tonight's just a plain uh, romaine lettuce, cucumbers, Jersey tomatoes, pepperoncini, which are uh, I put those in myself, and I'm going to put some capers in here and just do like a Caesar salad dressing for that. Okay, show me the Turkish thingy again. Oh, it's, you, know, you would <laughs> lose your mind. When you, you come, close -ups. when you come to visit, you it's like Ooh. literally ground beef, cheese, and spinach in like, but the phyllo dough is to die. It's like, forget about it. And they have all kinds of like, oh my God. I can't, right into it I can't and... stop eating. You know, I eat a lot anyway as it is, but so now I, I've just given up. I just gave up. I do not have to get into those costumes that those girls have to get into. Oh, yeah. I don't have to. They have to get into some serious costumes. So, but ladies, have you ever seen her behind the bar, though? I think yeah. she's pretty athletic. Uh, well, yes. yeah. You're back moving. Uh, oh, my you know, goodness. Yeah, you're moving I mean, back there. You got to move back there. What else are you going to do? And, and uh, you're, so, you're very instinctive. You know when I was like... I'm going to need a whiskey. Uh, <laughs> you would know. You saw the look in my eye. When listen, I was like, okay. Rosie, it, it is my job to anticipate your needs. <laughs> That's what I, well, it's I appreciate my job. You, and, and you got I, me through some of those nights. You got me through some it. of those well, <laughs> nights. You, ma so well. you made it look easy. And, uh, <laughs> and Jamie, you're like so sweet. Like you're so, you're kind of quiet. But you let your performance speak for Rosie's like, <laughs> yeah, Rosie. No, Rosie and I are the same. We're like, yeah. no, but I mean, when you said I was quiet, she was probably right. Like, I get, oh, I get yeah, to yeah. see the other side. Yeah. I get yeah, to see right. the other side. I'm, I'm quiet, and then I give her all of the talking. Uh, right. <laughs> what are your signs? What's your sign, Rosie? Are you Gemini? Uh, I'm Aquarius. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and and I'm Jane, a Virgo. I know, I was gonna say oh, that. Wow. My sister's a Virgo, and she's like you. She's kind of seems shy, but she's the boss. Like right. I am, a, like blah blah blah. I never stop talking. I'm a total Gemini. I'm all over the place. 
with like a, but my sister, the Virgo, who's younger than me, I totally acquiesced her. Like she's in charge of all our files, all our papers, anything having to do with anything. I'm like, oh no, no, you do it. Cause she's, mm-hmm. I call her the boss, you know, she's good. Virgos are good bosses. So you're so, Gemini, what about you, Leo? I, my moon sign is Virgo. <laughs> Okay. My son sign he went straight into the moon. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, my mom's an Aquarian. So, yes. Oh, there you go. Le- Leo is a Sag. <laughs> a Sag is great. I'm but a Sagittarian sun sign, yeah. His Virgo side is what, uh, just like you, uh, Jamie, is that that's what makes him someone that can take a lot of information and make it work. Because Leo, like, runs all the behind the scenes of the show. And I don't know what I do without Leo. So, big mm-hmm. shout out to Leo. Yay. I do because I love you. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I love you too. He's the best, uh, and Leo's an amazing performer. He's a great singer. He's an amazing playwright and a composer. So, you know, that's this show is just full of all these great creative people. Kevin Frey, much love, ladies from Jim Thorpe. I love your hat guy. Oh, Kevin! Oh, hey, yeah. Kevin. <laughs> How's it going? Love, how cool! Thanks so you have tuning in? Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and Adrian Christian has checked in. Adrian Christian is a great uh, singer, and he's going to be in our 2024 calendar. He is Mr. February. He sent us some really adorable, hot little, um, delightful pictures. Very we had thorough. To, yes, very thorough. Now, Leo cool. has the tireless task of combing through all those semi nudes. I mean, <laughs> not easy. It's not easy. It's a hard life. It's a hard Somebody's life. Somebody's got to do it. Uh, what are you going to do? do? Someone's got to do it. You're right. So, all right. So <laughs> we have a couple minutes left. We have about six minutes left to our show. So let's remind everybody this is <laughs> Jamie Marie Hannigan and uh, Rosie Lucia Corcoran. And they are the the faces and the the um, the fire the faces and the fire of Velvet <laughs> Stardust. They're amazing. They're wonderful people that you just want to be around anyway. But they're also incredibly talented, and they are uh, they are Velvet Stardust. And joining them are they have uh, as you said three to six dancers any given night. Uh, four to six pieces on stage. Sometimes there's background singers and you just cannot, it's a, it's a feast for your senses. You cannot keep up with what's going on on stage. It's so beautiful. (laughs) It's just like, just, it's like literally jumping in a pool of fun. You know, you're just like, I'm just going to have fun. Like, why are you doing marketing? (laughs) I I mean, I'm just saying what I felt and what I saw. I love that. Thank you. It's true. Like there's there's moments when I'm up there and singing like a song I've wanted to sing my entire life. And and just you get you usually you're just kind of outside your body a little. You have to just get on stage and do it. But there's little moments where you I just see everything that's going on and somebody's legs flying over here and somebody's top <laughs> flying over there and the lights and the smoke and the hoops yes. and just like, you know, I'll catch sight of one of the other guys in the band and I'm just like, ah, look what we're wow. doing and I just feel so lucky. <laughs> and but it's true. It's like it's that moment what it's like, what am I in right now? What is this, right. this fever dream of here? chaos that's that? happening? <laughs> yeah. If it's I was back in college, I would have thought, especially by what you were describing, that you were part of the old Bodvillian traveling troops. Because what you were describing about being in and adjusting and going, mm. those are things that you know I'm reading from people that were doing it back in the day. So for you to guys keep that alive. And be called to different places. That's pretty rocking, rocking. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. That's Thank that's you. where Rosie and I met in a past life. Was a traveling yeah. show. So I believe very that. Funny. I <laughs> believe that completely. Well, Danielle would know all about it. Danielle, our psychic, she knows all about those past live regressions. She, uh, I, probably you, that makes complete sense. When something, how did you two meet? By the way, I know we all, we're running out of time, but yeah, we gotta we gotta. Jamie, I'll take this. I love telling this story because it's funny. Um, But I was having auditions for, um, so my company that I do all the shows under is called Stage Stars Productions, which is my production company. So we do all kinds of things, live theater. We did the show Clue. We do the Rocky Horror Show. We do all kinds of stuff. I'm doing a fundraiser um, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month this Friday in Long Branch, New Jersey. So check that out. Um, If you just Google Stage Stars Productions, everything will come up, Facebook, Instagram, and you can see all the 
crazy stuff we have going on. Um, but so I was holding auditions for the Rocky Horror live show. So we do the full length musical, not the um, the movie Shadow where the Shadow. actors like mime in front of the film. So we do the full length musical live band, the whole thing. Wow. So I had auditions like what, 11 years ago, we decided something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, and uh, it was like me sitting in the lobby and like a bunch of people that knew me really well, like a bunch of my close friends at the time. And I knew there were people coming into audition or whatever. And, she walked she walked in the door with her like leather jacket over her shoulder and like just this like british accent and said something like oh i'm here to audition for whatever and everyone looked at me because they knew i'm like a huge spice girls fan and she she walked in there and was like hi blah, 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 and this whole thing and everybody just went <laughs> okay. like at that point i i mean like she happened to be really really talented but i was ready to just be like yes yeah. i love it <laughs> That's great. That's great. And it makes sense with everything that you loved, right? Like Rosie fits right in and with, <laughs> and everything that Jamie does like is perfect for you, Rosie. Yeah, so she, she has been a part of pretty much every single thing we've done for the last 11 years. Um, I'm lucky and I have a core group of people that have been around for a very long time that stick around and um, we love working together. So she's definitely, definitely one of those. Well, Leo, what was that name you just pulled up? Ted That's a friend Duke of Oh, it's Ted. Oh, we love Ted. Shout out to Ted. We he love you, Ted. Cool. Hi. <laughs> Ted does our sound and lighting. He's, if oh, a venue doesn't have in-house sound and lighting, Ted Ted comes along. He's just the nicest guy, super talented, um, anticipates our needs like you do at the bar. We love him. That's, yeah. the, that's the key. I think when, you, when you're around, you know, good people, just just that's that's your job anticipate people's sure. needs and and just do it well so ted we're so glad you joined us tonight honey how <laughs> nice and the lighting is amazing for you i can't show, see the so. emoji i'm blind it's a smile okay it's okay. a smile yeah. <laughs> um, yeah all right so um we sadly uh our show has come to an end so oh, now I know. I know i know i know um okay so here's what i want let's remind people that you have the benefit on the 6th, right, J Jamie? Yeah. So okay. this Friday we have um, a benefit. We're supporting a foundation called Casting for Recovery. They provide wellness retreats for um, those going through treatment or have survived breast cancer. Um, so we're very happy to support okay. that foundation. They're amazing. That's Friday in Long Branch, New Jersey. Okay. Following and week, Velvet Stardust at the Triad, Friday the 13th. Come on out, see the show. You won't regret it. No, you'll come back. You we promise. You'll be hooked, hooked, hooked. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and then just go to uh, follow them on on uh, Instagram. We'll we'll post that up, and then also you said Stage Stars, right? Stage Stars Productions is the name of my company, and they're kind of all linked. Like my yeah. personal Instagram page, Stage Stars, and then Velvet Stardust. You'll you'll find them. So if you just visit one of the pages, you can follow them all and see what we have going on. Wonderful! I can't say enough. I, I think you you're both wonderful. And uh, I, I can't wait to see you again. I just, I tend to work sometimes the same nights that you guys we'll are come, We'll come find you. We told come Sean we were going to come find <laughs> him yeah, after we the Triad you. show. So we will, we will definitely find you. Yeah. All right. And everybody, please, please, please do yourself a favor and follow, follow them because you're going to love it. You're going to make it. And it's a great thing to do with a group. Like what I would do is I would just grab a, even like your high, your old high school buddies or people that are visiting town, grab a group and go and get a table and you're going to freak out and just have the <laughs> Take a hundred of, your, of your closest friends and come visit us. Yes. You will not, you'll love Bring it, everybody. you'll love it. And that's it. So thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Jamie. Leo, my love, thank you for everything you do. And everybody that comes back every week, we love and appreciate you. Follow us on Instagram. We got our page back after our page was hacked for, oh, for a year. But we got it back. Follow us on YouTube. Uh, What's the story with Maria? And we, uh, we're we just glad you're here. We appreciate you. And we'll see you uh, next week. Okay? Thanks, everybody. Thanks, girls. Thanks for having Bye. us. Thank you. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.